uh, when I was first approached to take part of this, uh, asking what my favorite meal of my mother's was, right away, green tomatoes came to mind. Because my father was a, a teacher, we went to the cottage for the whole summer. And at the end of the summer, there was all these green tomatoes left over from my dad's garden that had to be used up. So my mom concocted this recipe and cooked it on the wood burning stove. There was no electricity at the cottage in those days. Oh, by the way, I'm 95, so I'm thinking of things 90 years ago. Anyway, the fact that it was at the cottage that I had the green tomatoes brought a flood of memories of the cottage to me. It was wonderful because I hadn't thought of these things for years. For instance, learning how to do the foxtrot at age five on the wide veranda with the, the farm boys that came to party with my teenage sister and dancing to a gramophone. Another thing I, that came to mind was after the rain in your bare feet, walking along the road and the, the mud squishing up between your toes as you walked. And also I remembered my grandma. We were out in the back field picking wild raspberries and then the aroma from those raspberries being baked in the pie in the wood burning stove. Oh, I can smell it right now. Anyway, it, that's what was so wonderful about participating in this, in this book. I'm happy that I had a chance to participate in uh, Back Lane Studios Community Cookbook, We Are What We Ate. Um, I found that it was a unique opportunity to think back on my mother and remember not just her cooking, but what she was like. She was, in everything she did, she was resourceful and creative, and it really showed in her cooking. So one of my favorites um, from childhood days was uh, a meal that she would make on Friday, not all the time, but once in a while. And she would take a can of salmon and uh, combine it with um, slivered potatoes, um, carrots, and, and sometimes green beans, and make a tempura batter. Uh, lightly fry them, the dumplings, and everyone would enjoy them with rice and um, tea and um, feel that we were having a really tasty Friday night dinner. So this project gave me a chance to think about mom um, in a rather focused way and it made me want to make that recipe myself. So I have made it several times since the completion of the cookbook. It evoked a lot of memories, evoked about many things. One being that my mother wasn't really a very good cook. But one thing that she could make that I really liked was apple cake. And, uh, and she made it, oh, I don't know, once a month, something like that. And, and I would look forward to her making it. And it wouldn't actually last that long because it was good and people would eat it. You know, it would be often her chocolate cake would last for, for at least a week, you know. <laughs> Um, and also I remember, so when she would make the apple cake, it would be a, um, on a Friday evening. And my grandfather, my father would pick up my grandfather at work and bring him home for dinner. And um, so I remember my grandfather being there and she would either make um, chi a, a, a chicken or a brisket on Friday evenings. It was always the same routine. And then desserts would vary from apple cake to honey cake to chocolate cake. And uh, the only one I really liked was the the apple cake, and it was the smell of it you know, that I liked. I liked the smell of apples and the cinnamon, and um, yeah, I just, and she was happy. She wasn't always happy, but she was happy then. <laughs> 
I'm Brenda Gravel, and I submitted a recipe from my mom for this cookbook, We Are What We Eat. It's called Pula. Pula is an enriched dough, sweet bread, made and seasoned with cardamom. It was a really, really important part of our growing up. The stories that we would share around the table as we ate the fresh bread that came out of the wood stove. and My mom always smelling of yeast and flour and vanilla. <laughs> excellent memories. Now since the cookbook has been written, I have unfortunately lost an aunt, a cousin, and my eldest brother. And it was with their deaths that I really started thinking about how important it is to preserve our history in some way, shape, or form. The stories that we have, the tales to tell, are important to pass down to the next generations. So I'm really grateful I have the opportunity to participate in the cookbook really grateful for Ellen and her team making it happen and so glad to know that a small piece of my family history has been preserved. Now if you haven't got a copy of the book yet I recommend you do. The stories are fantastic. Recipes aren't bad either.